find out why everybody in Southern New York is going, run, go see, is Paris burning? So don't go anywhere, okay? Okay. film which is being released nationally tomorrow Paris is burning is getting major 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 attention it features I said to you exotic gay subculture in New York that helps gay and lesbian young people to feel wanted and loved and accepted by dressing up as their fantasies today's guests are all featured in the film first on my immediate left is Dorian Corey uh, he or she, which would you prefer Whichever. all right fine. he is a legend in the drag underworld uh, as uh, is his counterpart Pepper Labage Beja? Beja. Beja, okay. And they have both been participating in the drag balls for years. Am I right on that? Okay. Next to them is Willie Ninja. He is a respected dancer and choreographer and also is no stranger to this underground culture. And last but not least on the end is Jenny Livingston, who is the director of this award winning documentary. Will you please welcome the stars of Paris is Burning? And I thank you very much for being here. Jenny, why is it called Paris? I, I said, is Paris burning? Because that's one of my favorite books. Why is it called Paris is burning? Uh, it's named uh, after an annual drag ball given by Paris Dupree called Paris is burning. Okay. And there's also a line in the film where Willie says, I don't want to take voguing just to Paris is burning. I want to take it to the real Paris and make the real Paris burn. So the title refers to crossover and burning desire and things like that. But it's much more. I mean, I, I, when they first said to me, uh, we're going to do a show today and we're going to do it on um, a drag ball and all this. I thought, we've done it, you know? And then I watched, we've done it, we've all seen it. We've seen it on Donahue, we've seen it on Oprah, we've seen it on me, we've seen it on Sally Jesse, even we just didn't cut me talk about it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they, they dressed the kid up once, you know? So, uh, uh, but, but the, it's so much more than just a ball. It started, I mean, it's really a way of life for everybody now. It it's, started way back in the 50s. In the 50s. Who started it now? Well, I wouldn't be able to tell you who started it, but I know it started back in the 50s because I was little, and they used to have balls on 155th Street and 8th Avenue at a ballroom where only a small minority of people would go once a year. Once like, a year. And they would have a ball for all the gay kids in the city that would come. And then... It graduated like they had one out in Long Island where up in Harlem on 158th Street, 155th Street, I mean, there was like the blacks and the Spanish would go to Rockland Palace. They would have once a, ball a year. Once a year. And then out on five, and D Daisy B, which was a big white queen, had the ball for the white queens out in, way out in Long Island. So when did it, A, start becoming integrated? It's, it's totally integrated now, and it's not just uh, gays. It, it's, it's... Oh, a lot of people yeah. come in. When did it integrate? It started in the 60s. Late 60s, early 70s. And it's much more than once a week. And once oh, yeah, once, once a year now. It's, oh, it's well, honey, once or it's, twice a month. It's it went more from, than being, from being a downtown big ball, where there was only like three or four a year, mm -hmm. then, it, then it went uptown and diversified out to become a much more multi category ball. What it is, is, and let me just explain again for people um, they have all, first of all, the tro everyone gets trophies, which is great, okay? But they're not just for the best drag. You know, no, or the no. most outrageous costume. Mm -hmm. It's something much deeper than that. Can you explain, Jenny? Well, I think that, that drag is a term that you probably couldn't even use um, to describe all of the categories. A category is sort of like at a fashion show. You have sportswear, evening wear, swimwear, and the ball has that too. But there are femme queens who are, who are you know, dressed as Pepper and Dorian are, like women, and there are butch queens like Willie who, you know, look like guys. And there's a category called realness. And, That's what I want to get to. And yeah. realness could be looking like anything that you're not. Femme so, queen realness is looking like a woman. Executive realness is, uh, executive butch queen realness, which is a male executive, is looking like a male executive. So carrying... people come as their fantasies. In other words, if you want to look like an executive, because I, I found that so meaningful, people come all dressed up in Brooks Brothers suits mm -hmm. and an attache case to look like a man that you would see on Madison Avenue. And That's they... right. Oh, what is all the accessories inside. Or, or even accessories inside. In, you mean when you open the attaché case? The World mm -hmm. Financial Times, the, the gold pens. 
They bring computers. Little computers. So what, it becomes a fantasy. It's like a dress up to say, tonight I am going to be an executive, or tonight I'm mm -hmm. going to be, which I thought, um, preppy students I thought was fascinating. People come dressed as preppy students. Or even there's a category called banshee boy and banshee girl, which means a tough boy or a tough girl in the street. So even dressed like a straight heterosexual mugger. <laughs> you know, right. I mean, it's yeah. really anything that you're not um, or, and might want to be or might want to make fun of in some cases. What, why is it so popular that it can happen twice a month? Now, what does this do for the people that go to the ball? You, I understand, because you get a chance to look fabulous and glamorous. Well, with me, even more so, you, see, you must remember, I entertain. So I do this yeah. every week. Yeah. <laughs> I'm dressed up every, twice a week, every week yeah. at, at the club where I work. But with the kids, you know, it's like that's how the, the family, the houses, and the ball, it, it all becomes, this is a chance where you get together with your peers and you're able to perform in front of those who understand exactly your lifestyle. Then you said family. When they introduced you, they said from the house of. Yes, the house. Because explain what's, again, what's happened, it's gone from just a ball where we're all going to get dressed up and I'm going to make my costume and show up and win a prize. It's suddenly, there are people that have become like mother figures to all the younger people. Ex explain what, what this is going on. Was in the 70s, my house was the first house to start it. Um, they were basically like clubs, like the Dupree's and the La Chanel. The La Chanel's the Chanel's These are clubs, like gay they were clubs, clubs. Gay clubs. And as the La Beiges became a house, we started calling ourselves houses after the fashion houses. But La Beige not being a fashion house, we were the first one to say well, we were a house. And then everybody started tagging on saying they but were houses. But now who is we? Your well, name is La Beige. Pepper La Beige. Yes, it was but Crystal La Beige and Subway La Beige. At that time, it was only drag queens. These are your friends? Place. That all took yeah. your name? Yeah. We will, no, I didn't. I took Crystal's name. Crystal was the mother of the all house. All right, so Crystal LaBeja was someone that went... To balls. To balls. She competed against the, excuse the expression, the white drags. Right. Painted white and won over some white queen sometimes. Okay. So now you said, I'm a friend of Crystal, so I'm going to be called yeah, part like of the house daughter, of LaBeja. And now, I what is the house. Being head of the house, which is the way they introduced you now. Yeah, because What Crystal's do you do on. as head of the house?